Hello everyone, this is China Paradigm, where we, Dashi Consulting, interview seasoned entrepreneurs in China. Hello everyone, I'm Matthew David, I'm the founder of Dashi Consulting and its podcast China Paradigm. And today, I'm with Louis Oudard. Thank you for being with us. You are the founder and still CEO of Creative Capital. It's such a good name, by the way. I, I want to know how you found this name. Um, since I know Creative Capital, I think it's such a good name for Branding agency. So the branding agency has been running for more than seven years now. You have obviously a big everywhere in the world, mainly in Shanghai, but also in New York, in Jakarta, I saw in Shenzhen. Uh, you are very active in Shenzhen as far as I understood. And what is very, very impressive is that you are certainly one of the only uh, service company, foreign service company I know, which is mainly working for Chinese clients. And that has been for me such an achievement that I'd like to understand much more about how you did it. And to start with, as we, I always start an interview, I like to understand uh, the size of the company, where you are in terms of development. You recently joined Altavia, uh, which is a um, 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 marketing, operational marketing, marketing company, a bit everywhere in the world now, uh, originated from, from France. So I'd like also to understand why you joined them, why you merged with them. Uh, of, of how, how you call it um, and uh, what it brought to you. So thank you very much, Louis. Hope I didn't say anything wrong in the introduction. And I'm looking forward to, to understand better how you came up with this name, Creative Capital, and how you developed the company. Hello, Mathieu. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, very exciting to be with you and, and share, some, share some of my uh, insights on, on what we do and on the uh, Chinese market and a little bit about uh, Creative Capital. Um, as you say, Creative Capital is a, a made in China a branding agency. Uh, the background of the name, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of, um, of uh, background in a way. So first, uh, we are a creative agency and then we like to have the word uh, creative uh, inside it. Um, we also believe that design and creativity is not there only for the sake of making something beautiful, but is also there to bring value to uh, the different stakeholders and shareholders. And therefore, we thought actually the word capital linked to it was an interesting parameter. Um, and then uh, third thing is um, the uh, mission of the company is to, ho is to help to uh, grow uh, uh, great brands in uh, uh, some of the biggest uh, capital of the world. And, and we started with Shanghai, which is one of the biggest capital of the world, which is the, the third uh, reason. Okay. So what about the size of the company now? Or before, uh, before you joined uh, Altavia um, or merged with them? So, so the size of the company, so we, um, in our Shanghai office, we have around um, uh, 30 plus uh, people. Uh, everybody is uh, creative. Uh, then we have um, uh, a small office in Hong Kong. Uh, we have uh, an office in uh, Jakarta with, uh, with around uh, 15 people. And we have a small office in, uh, uh, in New York. Um, uh, so these are the main uh, office of uh, uh, um, uh, Creative Capital. 15 people in Jakarta, so you are as big as in China. No, one five, not 50. China well, is 30. 15, but you, you just said that we, you have about 30 people in total, right? Uh, we have 30, around 30 plus people in China. So, so the, the, the Jakarta, yeah, uh, Jakarta is about half, half the size, a little bit less than half the size of, uh, of, of China. And we open, uh, Jakarta has been growing quite quickly for us, actually. We opened the office uh, a year and a half ago, and it's been run by uh, one of our uh, uh, Shanghainese uh, colleagues uh, uh, who became the, our uh, managing partner in, uh, in Indonesia. Oh, very impressive. I, yeah, I, I remember when, when you opened the Jakarta office. Yeah, one and a half ago, two years, and now it's 15 people. It's very, very impressive. How about the number of clients? Could you give us an idea of the number of clients the, the, within a year, within two years, or since the, since, since the beginning? Oh, my God. Uh, I stopped counting. Uh, I don't know, probably around 100, 100 clients, 100 plus clients. So we've been working... Um, uh, as a branding agency, so we've been working mostly with uh, Chinese clients. And as a branding agency, we've been working mostly on strategic projects. So, so we don't do much um, localization or adaptation. And, and therefore, uh, if you work on the uh, 
pure either rebranding of a brand or brand creation. Um, a lot of the projects that we do are long projects. Uh, uh, however, of course, we don't have uh, in the next uh, two months exactly the same project with the same uh, clients. So, so therefore, we've been uh, growing a lot of uh, client base by uh, clients referral. So lots of our uh, old clients uh, um, uh, remain good friends. We've been uh, introducing uh, some uh, uh, new friends and, uh, and new clients. And this is how we've been uh, growing the, uh, the company. And, and today, at least from uh, uh, Chinese office, uh, but 80% of our clients were, have been uh, big, uh, big Chinese uh, uh, companies. That's something I, I like to, to understand better is what do you do for them exactly? Uh, some people use the word branding, but I think it's overused. Uh, some people use the word branding for basically managing a WeChat account, managing a Weibo account, uh, building websites. But is it branding? How do you define branding and how do you define what you do for your clients? You talk about strategy. Uh, where does it start? Where does it stop? Uh, what's your deliverable? Do you offer PowerPoint? Do you offer, uh, uh, what, what's, what do you offer to your clients at the end of the day? So our offer is, is very, very simple. So we, we have a free, uh, free offer. The first uh, offer that we uh, give to our clients is uh, brand creation, so creating a new brand from scratch. The second offer is a brand turnaround, or actually I should say company turnaround, help, trying to help companies to go from, I have a logo, I have a famous logo to, to a, I'm selling a soul, an experience, a story to my consumers. And the third um, uh, offer is helping beautiful foreign brands to uh, localize their message to the Chinese audience. Um, number first and number two offer are actually quite specific to the uh, Asian market or Chinese market in the sense that in the brand creation world, uh, quite seldom in the Western world, the, the big uh, uh, groups of the world, the LVMH, the, the L'Oreal, we create brands from scratch. Therefore, very few um, branding agency actually in the Western world have the experience of creating brands from scratch. Um, there's a lot of brands being created in the Western world, but usually they are created by a smart marketing director partnering up with, I don't know, a design freelance and together slowly but surely they will craft and create a brand and after one year they might open a one corner or one little shop and after three years a second shop. In China it's a very different scale and game. So, so therefore our clients will usually be very big industrial groups, uh, maybe I don't know, the, one of the biggest uh, shoe manufacturer or one of the biggest lingerie manufacturer. And they have the production facility, they have the um, um, supply chain and distribution channel and, and retail channel, but they may not, may not have a brand. And therefore they will come to us and ask us to create from scratch a brand, from the brand story to the visual identity, to the packaging, to the shop design. So very 360 approach of a brand to deliver them uh, um, a brand in a, uh, in a package, uh, a brand in a, uh, as a tool that they can then deploy. And after one year, open maybe 50 shop. After two years, maybe 100 shop, and, uh, and that's it. So this is really our first offer. The second offer is, is in a way very similar to this third, first offer, is we help a lot of these very famous Chinese names to go from have a famous name to have a brand. And therefore, retouching all the different touch points of a brand, whether it's visual identity, packaging design, shop design, usually working on the three together to help um, uh, um, the brand become a very expressive brand that consumers will feel and see and remember. For instance, if you take a brand like L'Occitane from Provence, you, you close your eyes and you can feel, breathe Provence from the uh, red tile to the uh, key visual with, um, uh, I don't know, lavender or the French Abbey. Um, um, it's all these elements together that gives you the feeling of Provence. And this is um, this um, methodology that we've been adapting to, to our uh, Chinese clients, helping them to have a 360 uh, soul that customers can feel. Um, and the third offer is to help uh, usually uh, beautiful uh, foreign brands uh, to localize the message to the Chinese consumer. So in a nutshell, it would be, a, let's say I'm a luxury brand from Paris. So it's how to talk about Paris uh, without using the Eiffel Tower, still be relevant to a um, very sophisticated customer in Shanghai, Shenzhen, Chengdu, Beijing, and also eventually still be very relevant to consumers from tier three cities uh, 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 who are very eager to learn, but might never have been to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Milan or, or, or Paris and therefore have a more blurry 
a, a vision of, um, uh, of France. And, and, and it's really how to bridge these um, uh, um, uh, dilemma that lots of brands uh, have. Um, and so, so this is basically our offer. So which means that uh, our main outputs are actually uh, creative output, but very tangible output that uh, brands can adapt immediately. So, so this is what we do at, uh, at Creative Capital. So tangible output, is it that uh, they will get a logo, they will get a brand story, so they can uh, copy paste on their website and talk about it? Is it uh, the colors? Uh, is it the, 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 the wording? Is it all this you are going to offer them and the, 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 the way it's, the sales people are going to talk about it? It's going to be a little bit less on the wording, it's going to be more about like visual assets. So it's going to be uh, indeed the, uh, the logo, the packaging design, the shop design, uh, all the things that consumer will see when they interact with a brand. You talked about uh, Chinese companies, uh, different from scratch. You, you talked about the, the manufacturers, uh, OEM. Uh, could you give us some examples of, of brands you have, let's say, co-created um, with, with those uh, OEM? Uh, I remember actually, uh, that uh, you, when we talked uh, to, together, you, you, you talked about some of them. Would you mind re, uh, uh, mentioning some of them? Sure. So, so I mean, we've got we've, we've plenty of them. We've got with um, uh, Best Group. Best Group is uh, is a group from Zhengzhou. It's one of the biggest group in the uh, optic. They have probably eight or nine brands, and, and we've been uh, creating for them uh, three brands. Um, Actually, three or two, not two brands. So we've been creating two brands, kind of a low end, kind of a, a fast fashion glasses brand. Uh, we've been creating for them um, a contact lens, uh, a colored contact lens brand for very young, uh, 18 to 25 years old uh, ladies, consumers. And we've been uh, turning around um, uh, two of their brands. So one in the more uh, medical uh, optic care. And, and the last one, more a bit more uh, fashion uh, glasses brand. So, so this is one typical type of project that we do. So, so we will, uh, if they are a group and they have different brands, we will also, we work with them not necessarily on the, um, um, uh, the same brand that we've been working on, but on um, working on different brands of a group. Um, we've been working with uh, the group Good Baby, uh, which is uh, one of the biggest uh, kids web brand in China. They have a couple of thousand stores. Um, we've been working with Good Baby, same for like, two or three different brands, uh, helping uh, either to create new brands for them or turning around some of the existing brands. Uh, we've been working with uh, Imer, which is the largest uh, lingerie brand. So, so, so this is, our customers are very, um, consumer driven. Uh, um, we don't work with uh, electric cable. Or we don't work with brands that have, uh, can have an emotional um, uh, effect to the uh, customers. Um, and we, therefore, it's going to be uh, fashion, cosmetic, uh, food, um, all, everything links to, to lifestyle. We, we don't want also to be a um, um, Product specialists, we don't want only to do kids wear or fashion or shoes. Uh, we believe that we can gain best practice from uh, working with different industry. And the, the big chance that we have by having been in China during this for the last seven years is we really have um, a combination of first mover advantage combined with um, very interesting uh, portfolio, which means that you want the biggest tea. Uh, you, if you are a tea brand, well, we've been working with some of the biggest uh, Chinese uh, tea brands in China. You want um, um, lingerie, we've been working with some of the biggest lingerie brands in China. We work uh, cosmetic, well, we've been working with some of the biggest cosmetic brands in China and so on. So as well on the biggest one, but also on the niche, fast and growing. Uh, so, so, so we kind of combine the uh, um, stress or, or question mark that a client could have coming to us. So, so usually, uh, thanks to our very diverse and, and rich portfolio, we can show them very interesting case, relevant to industry, relevant to, to, to. So on one side, we don't, want to, we don't want to be product specialist. On the other side, we've been working with so many different type of projects that actually we, we, we gain a, a very, very deep, um, um, knowledge uh, on the Chinese market on both different industries but also di different geography because we we, um, we were we have clients I mean from uh, Wuyishan in China to uh, 
Chengdu and Zhengzhou and uh, Shi Jiazhuang. Uh, so uh, we've been probably working with uh, to Tianjin. I was in Tianjin last week. We've been probably working with um, 15, 20 different cities, probably more than that, 30 different cities in China. Okay, for people listening to, listening to us, Zhengzhou is the capital of Henan. Uh, it's not a small city, but it's not a city where many foreigners go. They may go to Shanghai or Beijing or Shi Jiazhuang, you say, in very, very, very close to, to Beijing. And it's, a, it's a very, very industrial city. Um, when you talk about Chinese clients, uh, do you work with them on their branding within China? Or there is always a perspective of being global, international, and that's why they pick you because you are international. Um, I think as of today, most of Chinese brands' uh, challenge is uh, within China. Uh, okay. uh, of course, we can see the Huawei, we can see the uh, O Plus, we can see the uh, One Plus, we can see. Uh, uh, the Lenovo and a couple of some of his big Chinese clients, uh, especially in the tech uh, world going overseas. In the consumer world, the, if you have a good brand in China, there's actually usually enough growth for you as of today in China. So, so the, most of the issues for Chinese clients today is within the Chinese uh, market. I mean, it doesn't mean that they are not interested in the Western market, but uh, a China market usually, if you're a good brand, is offering you uh, is offering these brands enough growth uh, for today, if, yeah, which of course would be different if it's a brand from uh, Luxembourg or, or Belgium. Which means that in China, with 300 stores, you can actually be a niche brand. Well, you, you, know, you mentioned the brand uh, Best Group, is it? Yes. Yeah. Could, could you tell, me, tell us more about what you did for them, more, more specifically? Uh, what was... Um, um, what was the process of creating the brand? Two brands you mentioned, uh, as I understood. Uh, and could you tell us what it has become and also the size of the company? Because I feel uh, many people who are listening to us may not know those Chinese companies. Uh, you mentioned several times they were very big companies uh, that are not known in the West, mo mo most of them. Uh, so if you could give us an idea of the size, you said Shredder Chart is a small, is a small brand uh, in China and it would be, it would be sizable in, in a country like France. So uh, could you tell us more about uh, those kind of clients, how big they are, and secondly, what you did precisely? Sure, sure, sure. So, so uh, Best Group is a big um, classes industrial group. They have a, a couple of hundred shops. They have their own uh, factory. Um, they worked uh, closely with... Uh, um, uh, so, so, so that's, that's their background. So, so they are one of the biggest, um, um, uh, they also have to remember the name, they're also the franchisee of, um, uh, of a big uh, Chinese glasses brand called, um, um, they used Sophie Marceau uh, as a, a testimonial. Um, um, I'm Bal uh, uh, Baloney, uh, uh, um, okay. Baloney or, or, or something like this. So we have a couple of hundred, probably 500, 600 stores. Um, uh, so uh, they came to us to, to, to diversify a little bit the offer and they have a very clear brief, which was we want to create uh, two new brands. One new brand uh, called uh, uh, Lookup. Uh, so they actually came, came with a name. Uh, they had the name. And, and that was the starting point. And for them, we, we, um, uh, we, we did a quick benchmark of what was happening in the uh, fast fashion uh, classes world. And then we created the brand from scratch. So it was uh, creating the uh, visual identity of the brand, the, the logo, the packaging, uh, the icon of the brand, the shop design, what the main uh, the landing page of uh, WeChat mini site uh, would look like. And that was really our, our, our key um, uh, delivery to work to them. Um, and then we did the same thing for another brand of them called Ati. So here also they came with the, the name. And from there, we, here again, we did exactly the same output. So visual identity, logo, packaging design, uh, uh, retail uh, shop design, uh, landing page of the digital. Uh, and, and so they had a 360 brand that then they could apply. It. So for Lookup, if I recall, they opened around 40 shops, I think, already uh, in, a, in a year and so. Uh, and at uh, probably 15 or 20 shop um, um, uh, as a standalone shop. And I think they've been having some um, uh, corners also in some place. Uh, and then for the existing brands, so we turn around some of the existing brands. So uh, uh, one of their uh, historical brand is called Best, which is the name of a group, uh, which is more classic um, uh, 
uh, glasses uh, brand on here we, we help them to uh, uh, uplift uh, the image of a brand so still keep the existing DNA uh, but uh, uh, bringing some more uh, modern and contemporary and appealing for consumers uh, elements so we, we touch uh, the logo we create a new icon we uh, uh, we work on, on the shop design and on different brand assets um, and we did for uh, best and we also did for another brand of himself which is called um, I'm trying to remember the other name uh, yeah it's uh, it will come back to me. Uh, and we uh, we turn around another their brand. Yeah, I, uh, act. I think. Yeah, no, I don't. Okay, okay, okay. So you talk about DNA. A lot of people working in branding talk about the DNA of the company, uh, of the, the brand. Sorry, uh, but the fact is that when you co-create a brand with a company, they don't have DNA. And is it that important to take the history of a brand when actually yourself with energy you can start from scratch and and, and create a new one? Uh, I, I, have, I have difficulty to understand how, um, how a DNA of a company, there's a brand, uh, when as an agency you need to turn around, you need to uh, create a, a, a new brand, how important it is. My feeling with a lot of Chinese brands is that they have very little DNA. They were manufacturers. They were yeah, uh, exactly. On, 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 on this issue, I mean, I, I think there's a big misunderstanding. In the, I mean, as you said earlier on, I think there's a big misunderstanding about what a brand is and, and, and what a retailer is. And so for instance, uh, um, if I tell you, um, so to, to you, Mathieu, what is Zara? Is Zara a brand? Mm, I would say it's a brand, right? Uh, describe, me, describe, describe me precisely a Zara product. <laughs> not a, maybe totally the target, but uh, it's a okay. fashion brand. So you you may you may buy several of the pieces of clothes every year. Uh, you can um, uh, you can buy different to, seasons. Okay, so to me, you are describing the business yeah. model. Uh, um, okay. Zara is not a brand to me. Uh, as, I mean, uh, it's a trademark. It's a famous trademark. Uh, Zara is a retailer. They sell. They have a beautiful uh, um, uh, offer. So they, they, uh, uh, their business model is to sell great product at a very fair price of the latest brand very quickly to the customers. And this is what they offer. So they are actually much more of a retailer, very, very well done retailer, supply chain machine, rather than a brand. Louis Vuitton, for instance, is not really a retailer. Re Louis Vuitton is a brand. So if I close my eyes and I think about Louis Vuitton, I will see their product. I will see the story of luxury traveling. I will see their last campaign that was doing, talking about luxury traveling. And I will see the previous campaign that will talk about luxury traveling. And that's who they are. They are a story. They are not actually a retailer. They are not actually selling products. Zara is selling good product. Louis Vuitton is not selling product. They are selling a dream. Um, and, and so and this is for retailers versus a brand with very strong DNA. And in the case of Louis Vuitton, heritage. Um, if you start from scratch, uh, um, you can start from scratch and build another Zara, which I think is going to be good luck because uh, before to have the same uh, uh, um, logistic and, and volume and uh, it's probably going to be hard to beat uh, both Zara price and, uh, and design. However, what you could eventually beat a Zara is by offering a soul different from Zara and, and, and therefore touching the customers. On, on, on when you look, for instance, in the cosmetic world, on, let, let's take again the, uh, the story of L'Occitane, or it could be, uh, or, actually, or, or in Korea, Amore Pacific has been very good with brands like uh, Innisfree. I don't think Amore Pacific was doing uh, um, uh, cosmetic 35 years ago in uh, Jeju Island with Innisfree. However, what they did, they took the story of Jeju Island and they packaged it in a beautiful story, which is the story of Innisfree, and if you go to an, an Innisfree store, you will feel the story of Jeju Island through uh, uh, the volcano uh, rock that they will put in the store to the visual of Jeju Island and so on. And this is what we do. So when we create brands, we bring a soul to the brand. I mean, it doesn't have to be necessarily a, a place. Uh, it could be something else. But we bring something that customers will feel uh, special and can relate and attach to. Uh, and this is for uh, the very difference between a retailer 
and a brand. And this is, I think, a, a very big misunderstanding that many people working in marketing, brands, and on different industry have, is they actually have a very different understanding of what a really brand is. A uh, brand is not just a name. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, yeah, I mean, Apple is a beautiful brand because if I close my eyes, I can really see all the uh, brand world of Apple. Acer is not a beautiful brand. I mean, Acer is a famous name, but if I close my eyes and I try to think what an Acer product looks like, no fucking idea. And I would be, I could challenge you to describe me an Acer product uh, if you don't have an Acer computer in front of you. And um, this is where we are relevant. Okay, okay, I got it. Uh, so it, it, let's say it's more about inspiration, isn't it? Inspiration and uh, having an identity uh, which is uh, appealing, I mean, appealing to, to images, to, 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 um, to, to imagination. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, correct. Okay. Uh, t talking about um, um, OEM uh, Chinese car, Chinese OEM building brands, what are the major major difficulties you find out? Uh, do you have also to, to for instance to to help them to differentiate their products? Because when when they begin to build a brand, I believe they are going to use similar products as what they produce for other brands. Uh, do you have to even advise them on this? What are the challenges? I think um, it's a very good question, um, and here we have a little bit of, a, or, or we do help them a little bit, but we go less deep. Uh, when it comes to product, and of course it depends on category, uh, let's take for instance the example of fashion. Uh, in fashion, if you are more uh, in the uh, uh, kind of uh, basic uh, product, it's much more about how putting the elements together. But like. Let's take the example of uh, my white shirt or your white shirt. What brands are these white shirts? Uh, they could be actually, they could be Uniqlo, they could be Dior. Uh, uh, what will make the difference is where you put it, where you sell it, and who wear it in a way. Uh, uh, and how you put them together in a store with a merchandising together. So when you put products that don't go well at all together, of course, there is an issue. When, but when there's a certain harmony uh, within the products, and within the retail identity, then it starts to work. So, so this is where we will bring a, a friendly eye to a customer, uh, making sure, of course, that um, uh, all the uh, products, uh, um, the look and feel of the products are aligned uh, with the DNA uh, of a brand that we are uh, uh, working on, and on the, so we don't have too much of a patchwork uh, when the uh, store uh, open. Um, and here again, I think it's more a question about consistency and, 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 and having products with integrate well with the, uh, uh, with the brand rather than having completely a, a breakthrough product. I mean, in the fashion world, I mean, most of the product that people buy is actually fairly basic. So you're saying that basically they could sell the same products, but the environment, the way they talk about it, the way, way, they, could, the way they could sell, and et cetera, making the difference. Um, I'm noting that the product will be exactly the same. Sometimes they are not that different. And, and yes, of course, the retail environment really makes a very big difference. Um, I'd like to, to go back on the beginning of, uh, of Creative Capital. I remember you had a previous uh, experience as an entrepreneur. I was, I was looking at your LinkedIn at the same time uh, to make sure it is, it is on your LinkedIn. Yeah, you, you founded Circuit Garden. Um, and I'd like to understand how you come up with uh, creative capital? You are the only founder, right? Uh, I'm sorry? You, you are the only founder. Of of which capital. company? Uh, creative creative capital. Capital. Uh, well, I, I was the uh, original, uh, original founder. I had some uh, uh, colleagues who, uh, uh, who've been with me since the beginning and, and therefore are also a co founder So like uh, uh, Tangai uh, in New York uh, who opened the, uh, uh, the office is, uh, is co-founder, uh, Olivier or COO join a couple of uh, really uh, months later, so therefore he's a co-founder, so, so we, uh, yeah, no, we really grew the, the business together. Okay, but you were the, at the origin, right? You were the first, yes. the first yes. one, and then people I was the first employee. Right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, 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 we joined at the same time, but yeah, uh, pretty okay. much, yeah. Okay, okay. So, t talking about the beginning of Creative Capital, what, what made you create Creative Capital? Is it because of the first experience as an entrepreneur, Secret Garden, 
I think it's very linked for, 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 for many uh, reasons and it's also probably what's been helping us to, to do things slightly different and to shape things differently. So we, Secret Garden was a retail experience and what we managed to do uh, around 10 years ago to, to uh, build and develop um, small independent uh, retail chain of flower shop was um, uh, quite hard and quite new back in the time. And, and um, after Secret Garden, some previous friends and clients from Secret Garden came to me, one actually in particular came to, uh, came to us and asked us to reproduce what we need with uh, Secret Garden to create a very strong brand with a strong concept, uh, uh, which we did for her. And, and very quickly, she, she raised uh, quite a lot of money and opened uh, many, many stores. And only it was really a, had a very um, uh, powerful uh, snowball uh, effect uh, for us. Um, uh, and so, so I think that's the first uh, uh, factor. Uh, the second one is having been in the retail uh, myself before uh, starting Creative Capital, uh, give us a different way of looking at things. Uh, so, so for instance, I don't know, uh, uh, Egyptian marble might be very beautiful, but, but it's going to be maybe very expensive to put in place. And therefore, we, we don't only have a an aesthetic look uh, at things when we do design. We also take very much into consideration uh, the cost Actually. and the difficulties to put things together. And some of the elements, like uh, which are much more practical retail things. So the, uh, the cashier may not look good in the shop. However, if you put it uh, behind the, the, the shop or in a smaller different room, which makes the shop look nicer. Maybe the store manager will go there and do some uh, meetings or, or have a um, a little siesta instead of uh, being on the floor and, and selling products. So I think it gives us a very good understanding of what really retail is and how to operate retail and, and having um, reactions of, of retail operators and not only like a, a branding and design guys. And, and therefore, we combine both the branding expertise, we've done it for ourselves uh, successfully, and we also uh, um, have run and operate stores which very, very few design, space designers, uh, 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 branding agency have. So, so we've been on both sides and, and lots of our colleagues. So, so, so we've got an, uh, another of my uh, partner, uh, John Vito has a retail background. He used to be in Xenia. So le lots of our colleagues actually have a brand and retail background because we, we think it brings a lot of value in, in what we do. To put it in perspective, you uh, founded uh, Secret Garden. So a uh, floor retail chain in eight, January 2008, and uh, for, it was for three years, roughly three years. And that, I had the same experience. I, I was managing a strategic a gift box business like uh, eight years ago, and it gave me a lot of credibility to one of my first clients. Yeah, as, as exactly. As well. So I, I feel the same, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you, so you talked about uh, the, the, the switch, uh, how you, from, from your first experience, you were able to, to start creative capital. But then how did you get those Chinese clients? Uh, the so, so, I mean, I feel very... So, very so, 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 so coming back, so the first clients who came to, to us with this idea of creating this uh, fashion brand was a Chinese friend. And, and, and we created mm -hmm. her, uh, her successful brand from scratch. And, and because this brand was quite successful back in the time, it really created a snowball effect. She presented us some of a friend and some oh, people came to us because they saw this. So, so we were really lucky to, 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 to do this at a time where there were really a lot of new brand being created. So it was, um, uh, that's what I mentioned earlier on kind of first mover advantage, have the right case and, and uh, at the time on this definitely was very helpful. I think today would be very difficult to, to, to if we would have had to start this yesterday, uh, it would be probably very hard. So, so uh, the fact that we have done this seven years ago was, um, I think, very uh, 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 lots of luck and, uh, that we managed to, to uh, capture and, uh, and transform. Um, probably the fact to speak also Chinese has been, um, has been very helpful. So, so it's a combination of have, uh, the retail background plus speaking Chinese plus having been uh, successful with some of the first case that we did with some Chinese partners and friends and, and, and that's it. Do you pitch yourself? In Chinese? Uh, I'm sorry? Do you pitch yourself in Chinese? Oh, 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 uh, do I, do oh, oh I mean, uh, oh, of course, we, we do presentation in Chinese all the time. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Talking about the expansion, so we talked about this, the start. Uh, talking about the expansion with new offices. So you open Shenzhen. I don't know the order, but uh, I think Shenzhen may have been second. 
uh, New York, Jakarta. Um, from my own experience and from the experience of even sizable companies, even big companies, uh, there is a huge cost at opening an office. Uh, it's rarely profitable over a few years, even even more, especially Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia is not easy, actually. Uh, Indonesia is a big market, but it's not easy. So what's your, what's your perspective on opening, um, opening uh, offices um, in other cities where you are not living, where you're not 24 hours? And uh, how, what have been the barriers and difficulties? Well, uh, touching wood, but, but uh, for, uh, we've been uh, doing well in Indonesia on the market where we open. Um, I think at the end of the day, it's about picking the right uh, people and then the right partners. And then we, we find we had the right partners and the right people and we uh, uh, find the best mechanism to have them uh, align uh, uh, with us. Uh, all our colleagues who open overseas office spend a lot of time with us in a uh, in Shanghai before you really go, going to, to one of these markets. Um, so it was a combination of picking market where we had the right resource, the right people, uh, we, where we also believe that our offer would be uh, relevant. Um, and Indonesia, for instance, made a lot of sense for us. I mean, we are a Chinese agency. Uh, Indonesia is a big market. There's a lot of uh, Chinese Indonesian, uh, uh, very successful in, um, in, um, in Indonesia. And of course, when we look at um, uh, successful uh, companies and reference they, they might not use to uh, they might not, might not look to Singapore or, or Europe or the US but actually they will very often looks at what's happening in China so therefore lots of the project that we are doing in China were very relevant a lot of the connections that we had in China in, in greater China in Shanghai or Hong Kong were also very relevant to, to, uh, to our uh, Jakarta office so we could open a lot of key and, and contacts uh, uh, from, uh, from China and um, and that's it. So so so, uh, and I think this is how uh, Jakarta has been has been growing because our offer was really relevant to the local market, and we had the right. So uh, you're offering services to companies, Indonesian companies, for their market, or it's um, of course, of course. I mean, we uh, I mean, uh, no 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 no. Uh, how many Indonesian brands can you name? <laughs> Good question. So, 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 um, but uh, how many br Indonesian brands is very up there. So, so uh, Indonesia is an amazing country with actually great companies, very smart entrepreneur, beautiful uh, products. Uh, and, and somehow uh, um, there is a deficit of, of powerful brands. So, so uh, or what we do in Indonesia is therefore so very relevant. So, so we help a lot of these great Indonesian companies to uh, uplift uh, their uh, offer. So, so therefore, a little bit like in China, uh, most of, actually not most, all the product, the project that we do in Indonesia are related to Indonesian brands, either starting brands for them or uh, turning around brand. And, and our China expertise is therefore very relevant to them. Okay. I feel that things went easy for you. Sorry? Like starting a business. I think feel th things went easy for you. Starting oh a God. business, uh, opening offices and so on. No difficulty. Could you? Is it? Is it? Is it real? <laughs> uh, well, I um, know things been easy. Things been quite. I mean, fun. Very exciting. Uh, so much work. I mean, uh, today is uh, Monday, eight o'clock. I'm in the office. Uh, I spend most of the time working. I mean, it, it's mostly work and dedication and, and focus and, and lots of work, but lots of fun also. Um, Working with uh, Chinese and Asian uh, clients, uh, uh, the boundary between a friendship and work is quite limited. So I spend uh, uh, m most of my uh, evening and weekend uh, spending time with friends and often uh, clients. So, so, so it's, um, uh, I don't know if it's been easy, it's been, it's been for sure a lot of work. I mean, it's been. You talked about referrals and uh, people talking about you, uh, introducing you to new clients and so on. I, were, were you building this intentionally or it was, it just came this way? Did you have a process to, to get more connections, to get more introduction? Did, did you? No, 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 I mean, it, but no, let's come back to the, to, 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 uh, to the friendship and, and friendly way. I mean, so, so we've got, um, uh, China is an ecosystem. So, so, uh, if you are, um, uh, 
if you are, let's say, a big fashion player in Zhengzhou, most likely you will be a distributor. And most likely you will distribute, uh, I don't know, 20 to 30 brands and maybe you will have 500 shops but uh, as a franchisee and maybe you also own a small brand. Uh, so if we are a friend of this uh, distributor in uh, Zhengzhou, uh, his interest uh, is us. Uh, and if one of the brands that he distributes uh, is uh, uh, not performing well, his best interest is actually to introduce him to uh, uh, the owner of his brand. And, and that's actually a very virtuous things for him and for the, uh, uh, the owner of his brand, if, if he projects and everything goes smoothly. And, and that's really how it's been working on us on the other side. If you see an interesting brand on, 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 on the, uh, that maybe he could distribute, uh, he's also eager to, 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 to get uh, uh, from us uh, introduction. And, and therefore, the, the, this introduction has been very um, uh, friendly and, and based on the mutual trust uh, over uh, over years and years of your years and, and working um, uh, uh, with them. So it's been uh, um, really on, on a friendly base, actually. It's a sizable company now doing open marketing, uh, mostly in retail uh, and present in, in France, but also in, in, um, in, in, in Shanghai, in Shanghai, in China, Beijing. Could you tell us more about what was the logic behind it? Of course. So, so I mean, it's it, it just uh, it, in a way it, it ended up being a no-brainer for us. It ended up being a no-brainer for for many reasons. First, uh, people. So so amazing synergies of people uh, at the management level, uh, at the um, um, skills uh, uh, skills level. So so that was uh, first, which I think something which was very very important for us. So very complementary in terms of uh, of skills. Um, second. Um, amazing complementarity in terms of offer. Um, uh, we are very concept driven and we work with a lot of local brands on the concept. Altavia is a beautiful platform that can help on all the marketing activation for all the brands that we work with. So therefore made a lot of sense in terms of uh, synergies of, of um, um, capabilities and offers. Uh, and third, it made also a beautiful um, complementarity in terms of geography. So, so, so uh, we are in, uh, in uh, Hong Kong and uh, uh, Shanghai and Jakarta and uh, Altavia is very um, uh, present in uh, many of the Chinese cities where we don't have an uh, office. They are present in um, uh, uh, Japan and Korea where we have clients but uh, uh, no uh, office. Uh, Altavia doesn't have office in Indonesia where we have an office. Also very, very um, complementary in terms of uh, geography, so so it was it was really a no-brainer, and, and, and I think uh, since uh, since we um, uh, we team up, uh, we can see how more uh, powerful we are. Okay, huh? okay. So what are the next steps? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. What are the next steps? What's the next step? Uh, well, the next step is to uh, continue to, uh, to grow, uh, uh, of course, uh, China and to develop um, uh, uh, the business in uh, in Asia. Okay. I, I see you may be busy soon. I know you have a very, very busy schedule today. Thank you very much, Louis. Uh, anything you'd like to add to, to correct? Anything um, you'd like to say to our audience? No, no. I, I, think, uh, I think it was a great, uh, great chatting, chatting with you. Thanks, uh, thanks for your time and for bringing me to the show and, uh, and, uh, and we're in touch. Thank you.